everybody, welcome to the Waldoc Way. Today's video is May's morning basket. And before I start showing you what is in the basket, I wanted to show you this printable because I've changed it a little bit. And what I changed about it really isn't um, like we're changing our morning basket forever, but for us, we kind of homeschool in what I call seasons or um, I believe Melissa Wiley refers to it as title schooling. And so as we get closer to the end of the school year and the summer, we are kind of winding down and doing more relaxed learning. So the majority of our learning will come in through our morning basket or um, through more fun things than necessarily like curriculum, table work, whatever. So this time of the year, I change the way I do morning basket. So I'm going to explain that now. So what I do this time of the year is I still do our daily must-dos, which for us are Bible, logic, or critical thinking, if that's what you prefer to call it, our journal, our read-aloud, some kind of movement. And then now, instead of listing things in, within subjects, what I'm doing is listing all of these extras. And so at this point in the year, my goal is to do our dailies and then one more thing. And what I let her do is I let her choose the one more thing from this column. So I kind of put everything in the basket or around the basket because this month it doesn't all fit in the basket. And we do these during breakfast. And then when she gets done eating, we do one more thing. So she gets to pick whatever the extra is that she wants to do that day. Now, does that mean we only do one more thing? No, if she wants to do more than one, we will do more than one. Um, but we definitely do at least one more thing. And then that way, by the end of the month, we've done pretty much everything that you're going to see here. So just so you know, that is how we are doing our morning basket probably from now until probably August. That's probably how our morning basket will be for the next four months as we kind of have a more relaxed homeschool throughout the summer. So if you haven't seen yet, our theme for this month is birds and bugs. We are definitely going to be ordering our caterpillars within the next few days. So I knew we were going to do bugs this month, um, but because she got some bird and bug stuff for her Easter, she asked if we could do both. So it'll be up to her whether we do birds half of the month and bugs half of the month, or whether we just kind of combine and do, you know, birds today, bugs tomorrow, however she wants to do it, whatever she picks is fine with me. And so I'm going to go ahead now and show you what is actually in the basket. So the first thing we have is our Bible, which is the I Am 40 Reasons to Trust God. And this is Bible stories, devotions, and prayers about the names of God. And it, much like the Jesus Storybook Bible, if you have never seen it, is gorgeous. It has the silk bookmark, which I love those. But so you have the God of Truth, and it has the Bible story and... Um, you have Bible verses and what happened next kind of things. The God of all power. But I mean, it is just gorgeous. I can't wait to dive into that. But God who set, who saves. So you have all of the different stories of the Bible based off of the different characteristics of God. I can't wait to dive into that one. For journal, we will be continuing through our question and answer a day for kids in case you haven't seen it yet. Um, this is basically three years. So we've already completed year one. We're working on year two now. You have a question a day and then you just answer it three years in a row. Now I write it for her. She just tells me the answer while she's eating, but I mainly do it for a keepsake. And we work on answering in complete sentences. For our read aloud, we are reading The Trumpet of the Swan. I believe this is either our second or third time reading it. We pretty much always read it about this time of year, um, either in May or June. And she asked to go ahead and read it now because it was a bird and it would go with our bird basket. And then I will be, this will pretty much be the kind of base for our basket. And then everything else will be more fun that she gets to pick through. I have the Tanglewood Hollow, a nature-based curriculum, Birds. Um which if you've never seen it includes like morning circle. It has like little finger plays, music, poetry, um, art and exploration within it. It has uh, some like pretend play in the garden, nature activities, you know, feeding the bird, different ways that you can do that. 
science and discovery and there's just tons of different things we'll definitely be doing this bird seed play-doh we actually have the safari birds for this so just different things a wonderful nature based fun and then after we finish the bird portion i don't have everything to show you however i do have a sneak peek it will be coming the first week of May, and it is by Tanglewood Hollow as well, and it will be her butterfly studies. So it is going to be based off of um, the Painted Lady Caterpillars, and it will be three weeks from what I've been told. Week one is Caterpillar, week two would be Chrysalis, and week three would be Butterfly, and each week has a story, a song, nature, and project. And so that's week one. And then you have each day of the week. So like there's Monday and you have your story, your song, nature, journaling, and exploration, and then handwork and projects. So I have the first week to show you guys. This is a sneak peek that she's given me for you all. Here's the beautiful caterpillar song. And then she has the butterfly story as well as these adorable little storytelling characters that you can put on popsicle sticks to retell that story. So I'm super excited to see the rest of that. And that will be, like I said, our main kind of basis for the whole month for the mask, the bird and the butterflies. And then what I'm going to show you now, I pretty much have a bird and a butterfly or a bird and a bug kind of of each. So I have um, poems by Jane Yolen. I have the birds of a feather and the bug off creepy crawly poems. And then from Usborne, I have the bird house and the bug hotel. And these were actually um, part of her Easter basket, which I will link up here for you all in case you want to see what all she got in that. And then I have these everything books. I absolutely love these. They have, um, tons of them. We have everything bird and everything bug. And what it is, is it's like a question. So there's all the different questions. That's not focusing very well for you guys. It's tons of questions and then it answers them, but it's really pretty. And so we normally do about one or two a day. So like what makes a bird a bird? What, why do birds go extinct? Can't they just fly away from their problems? And it has gorgeous pictures too. So I love that about it and realistic pictures. So we have the bird and the bug one. I also have these science vocabulary readers, which will be for her to read to me. And so we have the beautiful birds and the incredible insects. And I have the cat in the hat knows a lot about that. Fine feathered friends all about birds and on beyond bugs all about insects. Again, those will probably be for her to read to me. And then we have the National Geographic Kids, um, Little Kids First Big Book of Birds, which she loves everything National Geographic. So she will be thrilled just because it is National Geographic. She loves the realistic pictures and little bite-sized facts. So we have the birds and we have the bugs. And then I have some hands-on activities for her. It just fell over in the basket. So the first thing I have is the 100 birds to fold and fly. This is from Usborne and it's super. So you have like three different types of um, flyers and they're color coded in here. So you can see at the top, it shows you which flyer each of these are. And then that way you know how to fold them. So she has 100 different birds to fold and fly. We have the paint by sticker for kids, beautiful bugs. If you have never seen these, I love these. They have adult ones too and I love them. So there's little numbers on there and you turn to the page that has the stickers and their numbers correlate to the numbers on the picture. And then when you have put them all on, you end up with a beautiful bug picture. I have the bug and the bird. Oh, that's still bug. Sorry. And the bird pattern blocks from Stephanie Hathaway Designs. So there are quite a few different options here and she has the color ones and then just the outline depending on where your child is at. I like color so I print the color ones out but she has just the black outline ones as well. And then from Dover um, publications the Dover coloring books I have the bird watchers coloring book. 
So it has the realistic pictures and a little bit of information about each bird at the bottom. And then I have the insects coloring book as well. And the same thing, it's the realistic pictures with a little bit of information at the bottom. And what I love about them is that on the back and the front covers, it gives you an example of what it should look like. So like what the bug would look like or what the bird would look like. So you know, you know, it's true coloring. All right, and I wouldn't be me if I didn't have games to go with it. So I have the Professor Noggin um, bird trivia. In case you have never seen Professor Noggin before, they are these just cards and they're double-sided. And on the back, you have easy and hard questions. You decide beforehand which level you're going to play. And then it comes with a dice that has three numbers on it. So you roll that dice and then that's the question that you answer. If you get it answered correctly, you get to keep the card and whoever has the most cards at the end wins the game. So I have the bird one as well as the insect one. So we will be playing both of those. And normally when we play these as we're learning, we start on the easy questions and then we slowly progress to the hard so that, you know, we answer the hard at the very end to see, you know, if we've learned as much as we hope to have learned. I also have these two games. If you have never seen, I absolutely love um, the illustrations that Christine Berry does for um, this company when they produce them. They're gorgeous. They're some of my favorite games. Yes, they are a little bit pricey, but they're worth every penny. So I have the match a pair of birds and the butterfly wings and they're memory match games. But what's really cool about them is you're not just doing traditional matching. So right here, you are matching the common kingfisher, but you're matching the male to the female bird. You can see the blue jays here. Again, you're matching them, or sorry, the blue tit, you're matching the male to the female, which is really, really cool. And then they also give you this book, which is a guide, and inside you can see more about each of the birds. So normally what we do when somebody makes a match is they read about that bird so that we're learning a little bit more about them. And then I recently bought the Butterfly Wings one. We haven't even had a chance to play it. It was a last minute addition to her Easter basket. And what is so cool about this one is that you are matching the, oh, I'm sorry. I grabbed two of the wrong ones. You're matching the outside of the wings to the inside. So this would be a match right here. And again, you have the little book that tells you all about the butterfly. So as we make a match, we will read more information about them. And then I have the bird bingo and the bug bingo again by the same um, maker. And here it is. It's Magma for Lawrence King illustrated by Christine Berry. And they're just gorgeous. I love the information they give. I love the illustrations. So these are pretty much the same thing. You have the tiles for the call cards. And they're like really thick. Um, those are the little bingo chips. But they have like these really thick call cards and they're beautifully illustrated and then you have the sorry it's not it doesn't want to come out for me right now you have your bingo boards and again like the matching ones you have a guide so it tells you more information about each of the birds or the bugs if that's the one you're playing <clears throat> I actually own all of the bingos because we love them so much. They're just so pretty. So those are all of the games and all of the stuff that I have, but there's just one more thing I wanna show you because I know she'll be playing with them a lot and they are so cute. And they are these plush birds. They are made by the Cornell Lab of Ornithology and there are tons of them on Amazon. Like this is the Cardinal, we have the blue jay, somewhere we have a quail. Here's the ruby-throated hummingbird. But what is the coolest thing about them is they're plush, so they're for kids, but listen. So each bird does its call, and it's very realistic sounding. So, 
know, we have probably five or six of them and I'm sure I'll be grabbing some more of whichever birds end up being her favorite after this unit is over because they're just really cool. I love that it's a kid friendly way to listen to the sounds and it makes them easy to remember because you're looking at the bird um, as you know, they're making the sound. So that's it. That's everything I have for the morning basket for bugs and birds. Um, let me know on the bas in the comments down below if you have any additional things that you think I should add to my basket because in case we run out, I would love to have more options.